faster at it, actually. But you could use local tall rule here, too, if you don't see the algebra, right? So it's, it's really nice. Example three. I'll put it over here. Let me erase this evil physics example. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What would be sad is if I never actually taped the evil physics example. I erased the end of it, oh well. But. Is there any L'Hopital's rule problems in the homework I've assigned you that's due Thursday? Not really. Is there much um, optimization in the homework I've assigned you due Thursday? I think there's like a problem. All right? So L'Hopital's rule and a couple of applet, um, um, what should we call it, um, optimization problems I would expect in the final homework, um, which is due before test two, right? Test two is not far away. Um, you need to finish the homework which is due Thursday, the one which was due last Thursday, and the one that's after that to be best prepared for test two. So, <clears throat> test three, suppose we have the limit as x goes to infinity of x e to the minus x. Now, this is a problem that has indeterminate form. The, you see, the thing is, e to the minus x, the graph of that, is this, right? So like the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the minus x is 0. All right? And that just makes sense if you think about how e to the x minus, minus x works for a large number anyway. You don't have to see the graph if you think about how the function works. But <clears throat> this is type what? This is type infinity times zero. This is one of the indeterminate forms that I mentioned earlier in the course, right? So we can't just evaluate it. But here's the trick. We can rewrite this. And by the way, this is a problem we could not have settled before L'Hopital's rule. This problem requires L'Hopital's rule. Or or some rather um, sophisticated analysis, let's just say that. So notice that e to the minus x is equal to e to the x to the minus 1, right? Which is 1 over e to the x. So I can trade e to the minus x for 1 over e to the x. I have now changed the indeterminate form from 0 times infinity to this has Infinity over infinity. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, happy day. Now we can use L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule, type infinity over infinity, what we got? What's the derivative of x? 1. What's the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. What's this limit equal to? By the way, is this topic easier than graphing with calculus? The answer to my question is obvious, right? Yes, this is easier. It doesn't require analysis, it requires cal well, it does get fussier, you'll see, but there are many simple examples here to find and to share with you and to put on tests. This is equal to what? But you guys are weak on limits. Weak. And thus things have changed since test one. So in this sense, it's come back with this topic, right? Now this is probably not more than, I don't know, 10% of the next test, but it's still 10%, you know? So how do we decide? What is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over e to the x? You guys tell me. So think about plugging in a very large number, right? What happens if you put 100 in? Less than zero. It's it's yeah, it's it's one over e to the one hundred, which is like a really, really small number, right? So as you go further out, you can make that as small as you want. It gets closer.
closer and closer and closer to zero as you go further and further out. The answer here is zero. So one over something that's huge works out to a limit which works out to zero. Example four. What if we had something like the limit as x goes to, um, let's say, minus infinity of, oh, I don't know, um, inverse tangent of uh, x divided by x plus pi over 2. Now here, I need to remind you something. The graph of inverse tangent looks like this. And it has horizontal asymptotes of plus or minus pi over 2, right? So the limit as x goes to minus infinity of inverse tangent of x is equal to minus pi over 2. Oh, yeah, my bad. Um, as it's stated, this isn't interesting. As it's stated, this just blows up. All right, let me make this problem interesting. I wanted to add pi over 2 to the numerator. All right, now if I do that, what do I have? I have that numerator is going to minus pi over 2 plus pi over 2. It's going to 0. And the denominator, what happens is x goes to minus infinity. Oh, man. Oh, man. Sorry, these problems. Oh, fine. Um, well, as x, that's just infinity. So you got... What you're looking at then is type 0 over infinity. Um, actually, I don't know how to solve this problem right off. Golly. Oof. I'm sorry, I have made an example that I'm not quite sure what to do with. I did this in trigonometry yesterday, too. I ended the class with something I couldn't solve. I ended up with, like, tangent is twice tangent. I took a picture of it, texted it to my wife. I'm like, what did I wrong? And she's like, she immediately is like, blah. I'm like, oh. It's like somebody in the class should pull me. Um, no, this is not that. This is something else. Um, all right, let me try something a little different. How about this? We go to zero. Tangent of ax over the tangent of bx. Here a and b are constants. I mean, this was not a waste. It's good for me to review the limit as x goes to minus infinity of inverse tangent with you. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll I'll try to circle back to that example. Maybe tomorrow, actually. I think tomorrow I can actually take a take a stab at it. Um, I'll have to think about that one. I should have taken a picture of it. Oh, well. So now, as x goes to 0, tangent of 0 is 0. So this has type 0 and 0 with my L'Hopital's rule. What's the derivative of tangent? Oh, you guys got to stop me. Don't let me go over. Um, sorry, I just lost track of time on this one. I'll finish this one. So we got a secant squared ax divided by b, secant squared bx. Differentiating the top, differentiating the bottom. Isn't it beautiful we don't have to do the quotient rule? We separately differentiate the numerator and the denominator. Right. Don't reject that gift and start doing the quotient rule when you have the test. <laughs> like I see some students do that, like, no! Not the quotient rule for this one, no! Don't let up what I'm saying be a self-fulfilling prophecy, yeah? Alright, so what's secant squared of 0? Well, secant squared of 0 is 1 over cosine of 0, which is 1 over 1. Secant of 0 is 1, okay? So this is just equal to a over b. This kind of limit, like, I don't think we could have done this before. So L'Hopital's rule um, 
opens up a whole whole wide new class of examples that we're able to do. So thanks, guys.